Hello, welcome to our FTC Introduction Workshop on Components. As you may know, we are FTC Team 13356 Robo Force from Fremont, California. This is our third year doing FTC. We have seven members on the team, primarily all high schoolers, with some middle schoolers. Since we have started, we've been able to qualify for the uh, Mocal Regionals through Robo Performance. Today we have two members from our team to talk about commonly used components. I'm Aiden, and here joining me is Eric. So before I get started, here's our team's robot from last season that incorporates uh, some components that we're going to talk about today. So let's check it out. This is one of our matches for the North Carolina Regionals uh, last season. So right now we're currently showing the autonomous period, where the robot performs tasks from pre-programming instructions. Uh, notice that no one is controlling the robot at the moment. So now we're sh uh, shooting the rings into the high goal and they're being shot out by a uh, 6,000 RPM motor. And now the robot is going to pick up the wobble goal, and the claw that's grabbing onto the wobble goal is controlled by a servo, which we'll talk about later. Uh, you can check out the entire episode on our channel or read the link in the description. And now I'll hand it off to Eric to talk about today's topics. We divided the robot into three main parts so it's easier to understand. The first part is electronics, which controls the accessories, motors, and servos from a Java program. Next comes the chassis, also referred to as a drivetrain. It allows the robot to move around on the field. Lastly comes the accessories, like manipulators, intakes, and shooters. With the three cooperating together, the robot is able to perform tasks. Now we will look more in depth for each of them. First, we start off with the electronics. A crucial part of the electronics is the control hub, which essentially acts as the brain of the robot. It takes inputs from cameras, different sensors, encoders, remote controls, and more. On the bottom left is an image of a FTC legal control hub from Rev, where you can upload your own Java code. After it interfaces with the sensors, it will output it to the drivetrain motors, and other parts of the robot. The control hub also runs an autonomous program when the controller isn't being used. Furthermore, it can work with other expansion hubs, shown on the bottom left. This is a typical diagram of how the robot is controlled. We will start off with two controllers, operated by human drivers that's connected to an Android phone. It also runs an autonomous program without drivers. The Android phone at the driver station pairs with the Android phone on the robot through Wi-Fi. Now the Android phone will interface with the control hub, which does more computations before it finally outputs to the motors and servos. The whole robot is driven by a 12-volt motor shown on the top left, and it's always good to add an on-off switch to your robot. If you don't have enough ports to add motors or sensors, you can add an expansion hub. I will now hand it back to Aiden to talk about the drivetrain. The drivetrain is like the heart and skeleton to the robot. The purpose of the drivetrain is to move the robot and it's a crucial part of its overall function. It's usually composed of four wheels powered by four motors to assist system of belts, chains, or gears. When designing the drivetrain, it's good to keep in mind the durability, agility, number of motors used, gear ratio, and traction. More advanced teams may focus on ability to play defense, but in general, maneuverability and speed are the main factors in a successful drive trip. There are many types of different drive trains that you can make. Tank or skid steer is the simplest drive train to build since you don't need to worry about powering all four wheels. Though it's slower than other options, underpowered, lacks agility and maneuverability, and has a poor acceleration. This is mainly due to there being only two motors. Magnum drivetrains consist of four magnum wheels which are powered independently by one motor. The primary advantage is its maneuverability, especially because it can strafe instead of turn and drive. The rollers on magnum wheels form a 45 degree angle with the wheels axis of rotation, which allows the drivetrain to move in any direction unlike a six wheel drive, which we'll talk about later. It is a very versatile drivetrain and has great acceleration. Though it suffers in traction since the rollers are angled, thus making it easy to push around during defense. 
A six-wheel drivetrain is a common competitive drivetrain FTC. It has a great traction and maneuverability, and by having six wheels, the drivetrain has more contact with the ground, helping the stability and traction. This allows it to be a great drivetrain for defense-based games. And lastly, a sword drive. Like a mechanical drivetrain, it can also move in any direction. But instead of angled rollers, there's a servo that controls the angle of the traction wheel. This makes it uh this makes the swerve drivetrain much uh bigger and taller than most uh compared to most drivetrains. Drivetrain kits. If you don't want to build your own drivetrain, don't worry. There are tons of drivetrain kits that are sold by vendors like Gobota, Rev, and Endemark. Gobota has a Mechnum and six wheel drive option. They are simple and easy to build, providing an excellent starting point. For robots that are built with Kubota parts. The Tower Runner is a universal chassis kit sold by Andy Mark. It is available in several options like six wheel drive, Mechnum, and tank tread. Given how expensive they are, we don't recommend getting it. Types of wheels. Like we said before, Mechnum wheels have individual rubber rollers that are angled at 45 degrees. This allows it to move in any direction wanted. On the other hand, Omni wheels have parallel rubber wheels around the wheel, which gives it more traction compared to Mechna wheels. They are often used to allow for forward and backward movement and work great with traction wheels. As the name implies, traction wheels have a wide track width which provides a large contact area with the ground. This allows for excellent surface traction. Designing a frame A drivetrain needs a general frame so other components can be mounted onto it. This is generally built from aluminum channels that you can buy from vendors. The holes on the channels allow for screws, nuts, bearings, and axles to easily fit in. Now I'll hand, I'll hand it off to Eric to talk about accessories. Each accessory performed a specific task. The two main objectives last year given by FIRST were to fire a ring into a goal and move wobble goals into target zones. Two common components used in accessories are motors and servos. Each of them have their own pros and cons. Motors have no limit to their rotation and have more torque, which means it's stronger and can lift a heavier load. Attaching an encoder to the back of the motor also allows it to have even more precise movement since it keeps track of the speed and position of the motor shaft. You can buy them with different gear ratios, which vary the torque and speed. The servos used in FTC are weaker than the motors, but they also take up less space. Additionally, it has a built-in potentiometer, which measures the angle of the shaft and it allows the servo to be extremely precise to the angle. Here are examples of how they can be used. Motors are used in the drivetrain of the robot that powers the wheels. It can also lift a robot arm up and down, like last year's Wobbego arm. Additionally, it also drives the ring intake pulleys on our robot. Servos were also used on our robot, like closing the wobble claw and pushing the rings one by one into the shooter. Here's a list of some vendors where you can buy FTC Lego parts from. Links to all of these can be found in the description below. That's all for today. If you want to contact us about questions, you can do it via email or in the comments below. And also don't forget to check out our website in the description. Thank you for attending our FC intro to components workshop.